this early that means you're one of our vip angels if you're interested in that it's our sustainer program uh, all it is is you sign up via donor box to make a small monthly contribution of five ten twenty dollars a month that helps lower our expenses throughout the year and we really appreciate it so today is super weekend number two super weekends are essentially our versions of three days because we are a weekend only drum corps we tend to rehearse only on the weekends super weekends essentially is friday sectionals saturday full day rehearsal with the fun event in the evening and then sunday a normal day rehearsal today is saturday our fun event is where we rented a private movie theater and we're gonna go watch uh spider-man into the spider-verse members selected that movie uh, they also wanted to watch a very obscure Japanese anime about a euphonium, and I said no, so that might come back to haunt me later. Um, overall, the, the core is doing very good this year. Uh, the battery is the strongest it's been probably since 2017, uh, 2016. Uh, most of them come in with experience either in this core, other cores, uh, WGI Open uh, as well. The front ensemble is very strong as well. Um, it's actually almost half of it, more than half of it is all alumni that have either marched here one or two years or have gone on to march WGI Open, WGI Class A, WGI World, and have actually returned um, to continue playing. We have people from Matrix World, Matrix Open, people from Innovate, we have people from Connexus, we have people from Galaxy Percussion, we have some, some people from Genesis Drum and Bugle Corps, um, you know, so it's kind of a very well-rounded group. Uh, we also have a, a few local students as well. Uh, the horn line uh, is uh, bigger than last year. Uh, we still have some room to grow. They are doing very very well overall. Uh, the best way to describe it is that the majority of them are well experienced. Um, I would say probably 75% of the horn line is veterans, uh, either veterans here or veterans from a local college band. Um, a lot of our alumni are in year four, five, uh, six in the horn line, um, you know, and uh, we've also picked up some new members from uh, around the state as well. Uh, they're progressing very, very well. Uh, the brass caption is Sam Jackson. He is an alumni of Blue Stars and is a band director in Cincinnati, and they've been doing very, very well. And a few more brass members, uh, we're looking to add about two more trumpets and one mellophone. Uh, we're not looking for a big horn line. We just want to have a quality horn line. So uh, if you are or know someone that's an age out or recently graduated college and wants to get back into it, it's a lot of fun. It's not as intense as a touring core. It's a weekend only core. So we go home at the end of the night and uh, you'll see everyone next week. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, so the show this year. So I, I, we haven't announced it yet, but I'm going to give you guys kind of a, a nice little peek. Uh, so what the show this year is, is called Homecoming. Uh, it's our 20th anniversary and what homecoming means to us is not only a combination of coming home the act of coming home but also celebrating what that is we're taking elements of what you'd see like in an hbcu style homecoming so imagine dancing you know a lot of fun music um, and then also combining it with elements of what you kind of expected like a high school homecoming dance so we're starting it with take on me by aha the members picked that song they listened to it last year on their mixtape they legitimately made a mixtape last year and played it on a cassette player. Uh, so we start with that. Um, we continue on with the Beyonce's Party, uh, the homecoming version. So for that, uh, we're happy to have some of our St. Strumline uh, alumni that have come and are teaching and helping us coordinate that as well. Uh, we also have some of our members that have gone off to Wilberforce University and have come back and are bringing back some of their experience. And they're gonna help us uh, kind of craft a homage to our, our history as an HBCU drumline. As far as I know, this is the first time a drum corps ever brought this element to the field. Um, we're very happy to do so and be taught by people that have experienced it, lived it, and uh, you know have made it part of their educational and performance experience. Our third song uh, is Best Part by Daniel Caesar. So, you know, imagine that now we've crowned our king and queen um, or our, our homecoming court, whatever you want to describe it as, and this is the, the slow dance. So there's going to be interactive voting. So in the stands this year, you'll be able to scan the QR code and vote uh, basically at the, for the beginning part of the show, um, which is a great opportunity. It's very interactive. So you kind of have a little bit more uh, of a, <laughs> a say on who wins that night. We close the show with thanks for the memories. Uh, it's Fall Out Boy. So you kind of think it's like, hey, you know, da -da -da -da, thanks for the memories. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, overall, it's meant to kind of appeal to uh, a broad audience, but also to kind of invoke that feeling of, hey, I'm here with my friends again, and I'm saying goodbye. I'll see you again, you know, in a couple days or later. Uh, so we're really excited to do that. I will say overall, this 20th anniversary is a big year for us. Not only are we have we purchased our first new uniforms ever, we also have uh, taken a lot more time and uh, kind of reached back to our community. 
Uh, we spent we kicked off the beginning of the season by playing at local HBCU band events. Uber Fortune University uh, invited us to come and play at their uh, high school band showcase. And we went and we went and performed. Uh, we played part of our show. Uh, but more importantly, we actually played a lot of pep band and stand tunes, which kind of catered to the audience. The members loved it. The people were singing, they were dancing with us. Uh, they were having church, basically. It was a lot of fun. Um, then we continued and played at the Lyndon McKinley band battle. Uh, and the band director at Lyndon McKinley is Stephen Ingram. He was uh, on staff with us in 2021. And uh, their percussion is taught by DeAndre Cutterton, who is also a St. Stromline alumni. So it was kind of a nice opportunity to kind of come back and, you know, um, support our saints in the community and it was also great for the members because they got to basically play uh, for many years. <laughs> You know, one thing we don't consider when we uh, think about drum corps, we think about the marching arts, is the, var the variety of styles also means there's some cross-cultural differences in those styles. And one of the key things that we kind of picked up on this year was mallet percussion. Um, a lot of schools, uh, you know, city schools, rural schools, a lot of schools, they don't have a access to the same level of mallet uh, percussion education um, that many of the drum corps do. So at both of these locations, the Bannerkers asked us to do a demonstration of our front ensemble. Um, so for a lot of these kids, it's the first time they've ever seen a uh, mallet percussion instrument and drum set tied together into something that isn't just like a, a concert band. So it really was kind of showing them pulling the marching, uh, bringing the marching kind of into the, the concert hall in some part. A lot of the schools that we went to, a lot of them don't use tonal bass drums. Some of them do, but the majority of them don't because they're kind of small. So for a lot of the students, this is the first time they've ever seen pitch bass drums. More importantly, they've never seen people playing 30 second notes sextuplets on these drums back and forth. So it was a great educational opportunity, not only for the students in the audience, but also for the core. The core members had a lot of them. It was their first HBC style event, their first show style event. We also have some alumni from OU, so they were living their best life and it was great. With that being said, we're nearing the competitive portion of our season. Our first show will be July 5th in Mason, Ohio. We also, uh, on July 1st, will be at the Blue Coats um, community event. It's gonna be a lot of fun. That'll be streamed on Flow Marching. So please go ahead uh, and support us.
Once again, I just want to thank you for your contributions and your donations this year. It has been amazing. Uh, I truly can't tell you how having uh, sustaining donors has really shifted our funding model. Um, if you do not know, our, our program does not rely solely on membership grants. We use a, a kind of a diverse stream that is a, actually has us doing things like refurbishing instruments and selling them and in some cases donating them. We also will uh, apply for local grants. That is one thing that has been a, a big benefit to us. Uh, we've relied heavily on grants, either corporate grants, uh, community grants as well, to take up, uh, you know, I would say is 10 to 20% of our budget and in some cases 25% of our budget. So that way the burden to the members is the lowest. That's really important to us. Accessibility as well as affordability is really important um, because a lot of the members, even at the $500 range, are struggling to pay that. Um, so what you, what you do, your donations really, really make a big impact. For a lot of these young people um, and even some of the young adults, this is what they need right now. As we become adults, um, as we graduate high school, we lose some of the confines uh, that our community kind of puts on us because you're in a school. And so for a lot of uh, young people, college students, et cetera, some of them are going to college, they don't have a band. Some of them have graduated college, they don't have a band. Some of the, the younger people, they go to a school where they don't have a marching band. So for this, it's getting them active, it's getting them outside, it's getting them socializing. And that's so important, especially coming out of the pandemic. As we know, there's a kind of a spike in loneliness right now. So we're kind of using drum corps as a way to say, hey, you're a band geek, you like drum corps, I like drum corps too, let's come together, let's make a community out of that. So I really just wanna again thank you guys for your support.